This is the second iteration of the workshop that was created by the Architectural Association and the Visiting School program. Uh, the workshop is titled Post-Industrial Landscapes and the idea behind it is to create a cloud or a flying object that allows via um, remote sensoring um, and remote sensory technology so that you can experience what it would be to be just a couple of feet above what was the shoreline at the end of the trail of the settlers going to the west. Um, and this last 10 days the student actually the students designed um, a balloon, a balloon or floating device we called it and um, the students were really figuring out how to connect the balloons, how to inflate the balloons, what material to use, uh, what geometry the balloons have and how they accumulate together as a whole. So 200 balloons were fabricated and not inflated back at uh, 601 Brandon and essentially what they did is they brought that to site with uh, helium and all of the other you know, requisite items to uh, inflate it here, attach them and put it up in the sky. Once it's in the sky it, it will be broadcasting uh, 360 degree panoramas down to some Oculus Rift headsets so that you'll be able to essentially experience in a, um, in a, in a kind of full 360 degree way uh, a room in the sky. So as a larger image it's to start with small ideas uh, filter out one idea that we want to pursue as a group, then dividing the group into various uh, subgroups of the, the things that need to be uh, figured out, detailed or added in quality. So it's almost like to do an entire design project from its conceptual starting point to its absolute final uh, detailing of be it the physical or the digital technologies involved into it. All right, well, we'll start with the materials. Uh, we did a lot of trial and error between a lot of different materials. We've tried mylars, we've tried reflective foil, if you will, um, different bags, different plastic bags, different techniques of joining them together, whether it was tape and glue, using a hot roller, using an iron. Um, and really we want to see how the material bonded to itself or to other materials without perforating it. And that was the big key is what makes the best seal without creating any perforations. Because even an iron through a piece of paper on top of the plastic could still melt a hole into the plastic. Uh, at the end we ended up going with a white hued garbage bag um, that like I said before is pre-packaged uh, to allow us to inflate them quickly and manufacture this here at Ocean Beach. I'm excited I think I know we know all know that's gonna fly and it's gonna work and we're just excited to kind of put ourselves up and up in the air and see what's going on. So because of the wind that we're having on the beach the balloons are actually not getting enough lift and if you look back there and you look at the, the clusters that we have so far they're just staying about six inches above the ground because there's just not enough lift in those in those garbage bags and it seems like even as we keep adding there's just a lot of helium loss to wind ratio so it's at this point we're looking to see if we can find a kite so that we can still get the, the above the bird's eye view experience that we hoped for in this project which was just one facet of the entire project so that's where we're at right now, so we're scrambling around trying to locate new avenues. What everyone's facing out here currently is the exact same thing that you face as an architect, right? You're always putting out fires. In this case, it's a very physical fire that they're working with that they're trying to solve. Uh, but it doesn't matter if you're on the phone with a contractor or with a supplier. You're always solving these kinds of problems. It's just a you know matter of fact of the discipline that we're in. Uh, and so everybody's just hopefully enjoying that process. I guess fabricating in the wind is the, probably the biggest problem. I think if we would have prefabricated and then brought them here and launched with, while they were all full, it would be much more successful. But unfortunately, you know, the time stink between, you know, filling a balloon, letting it sit, and the wind just jostling it around. Because of the way it's designed, there's just too many opportunities for air to leak out. So jostling around is just making the air come out faster. You know, if you push pressure on a balloon, it's going to come out. So. Um, the goals of the project, really the idea of putting somebody up in a spa into space or at least 100 feet into the air, um, is really thinking about going forward in the future and how on earth we've kind of exhausted the amount of land that we can build on. There's still land to build on, but we want to see what's the next frontier and it's really going vertical. So we want to provide an experience for people to see what it'd be like being 100 feet in the air. Uh, with nothing underneath you.
without trying to float a person. So we chose Ocean Beach because of its location and its openness. Uh, also because we don't know the kind of people that are going to walk through and interact with this installation piece. Uh, and also it provides some different views than just putting it up in the city because in the city you can go in a tall building and look down and kind of get a feeling of what it's like to be a couple hundred feet in the air. But here with its openness and looking over the ocean as well as Golden Gate Park, it provides us some unique opportunities. So it is actually almost to run an office or a studio together as one project from the start to the end. To the drawings as well, which balloons come where, go where, which connection elements are where. Yeah, yeah it's a massive so, collaborative so, operation, yeah. so, which I think is great for them. I think that's the learning outcome as well to, to understand how does one how does one construct a project? How does one manage a project? How, one, how does one detail a project? How does one manufacture a project? How does one do tests that fail and that are then actually allowing to be redesigned or better designed? So that is a constant iterative process that allows this, let's say, not linear design process, but curved linear design process that takes iterations and iterations and iterations to allow to come to a refined project in the end. For us as well as for them, I think it was a very, very nice dynamic uh, experience in that way. Tobias and Ollie have been fantastic instructors. Uh, it's been exciting to have them on site. Um, you know, they're, they're bringing research and experience from a different place, and that's always a, a really positive thing for any academic environment in any discipline, in my opinion. Uh, but for us specifically, it's been really nice to have our students interacting with both their students and students from other schools because it's, it's just changed the way the students are interacting, the things that they're talking about. It's just bringing new and exciting things to the table for our students and for us as well. And it's been you know, really, really a pleasure to have them here. And yeah, it absolutely is an honor to have the AA around. So the entire camera actually is composed from both these two parts in a way, which they can't put together like this. Uh, so what's happening here basically, we have the GoPro camera, which is filming this mirror, the spherical mirror, which physically distorts the image in a way. Uh, and then the image, the distorted image that the GoPro is, get, is filming in a way, uh, gets sent to this, uh, this broadcaster. And this is a, 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 the transmitter now, which transmits the entire signal over, over the antenna. I mean, now it's just bubble wrapped a bit because we kind of try to protect the entire thing and put them up together. This is the battery for the transmitter and GoPro runs on its own battery. Along the, the spherical deformation mirror, uh, there is a big bunch of, there's an Arduino board basically, oh, I wouldn't wrap it up though, it might be, I have, oh, actually we can slightly open it up. Uh, so basically there's an Arduino board with the with a gyroscope sensor and temperature sensor and light intensity sensor. Uh, and these two ones are rigged to the LED, LED rig on all the four, four sides of it. So basically, according to the movement of the entire antenna, the LEDs are, are turning on and showing the orientation of it and showing the, the tilt of it in a way. Uh, that's kind of one layer of feeling or seeing visually the environment and the kind of mobility of it. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the entire piece kind of works together like this now. I think that's the most important part of it. Uh, the relation between these two ones, where actually you're filming upwards, but you're seeing downwards, you know. I think the students are getting a really good experience, uh, especially conducting and, and planning this whole installation. It is, uh, it, it, at first glance, it looks very foreign to architecture, but uh, the, the whole narrative and how this project comes together is actually very close to what architects are doing. It's, it's basically the whole process of planning a project, executing a project one-to-one -one that is very exciting to the students. And they, I think the learning curve is very high. And even the mistakes that occur and things that we anticipated but uh, now become bigger problems as the installation is going up is a great learning experience.